Hmm. Okay, looks like it's live. Hello everyone, I've got no idea why it's put the old thumbnail on for this one. G'day Global, how you going? I wonder if I can even change it, I probably can't. Oh well, scuffed uh, thumbnail it is. G'day Butt Scratcher. Afternoon to you too, legend. Hey Kevin, hey Griff, how's everyone going? Hey Aria, I am glad it's the weekend, that's for sure. Not loving what happened last night, but maybe we can cover that in a second too. Oh, okay. Uh, Gator, hey, you didn't watch the last one. What happened with Dacos? Hag was see the pies get slapped <laughs> and Dacos is scared of the ball. All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, bring up some, uh, DFS and we'll have a bit of a look at last night's game. Oh, actually, I hope it's got, um, the right settings in terms of it's using my microphone and all that. Hopefully this is better. Please let me know if, like, anything stuffed up because last week I used um, StreamYard and then this week I'm back to using it off OBS, which uh, you guys don't care about. But um, the, I clearly haven't set up the settings. This is why the thumbnail is weird. If you can't hear me, let me know. All right. A bit of the old game from last night, huh? So uh, this game was interesting. Um, pies weren't too bad to half time and then kind of got, uh, blown a bit out in the second half there. They did have moments where they looked like they were coming back, but, um, yeah. Uh, so I'm getting clowned in discord because the thumbnails popped up with the 2023 team open first team picked and they're like, oh, bros already moved on to 2025 after a bad Friday night or Thursday night. A little bit true. Maybe a little bit true. I don't know. It's not that bad. Um, you look more handsome than usual. Thank you. I feel like a joke's coming on the back end of that butt scratcher, but I'll take it uh, on face value. So, uh, yeah, what happened last night? Well, um, Pies were not good. Pies midfield in particular was really bad. Um, a, a lot of them were either showing their age or looking quite washed. This is probably the worst I've seen out of Tom Mitchell in years. And I've been a big Tom Mitchell fan. He's, his whole career, I think he's been underrated. I think the talk about lack of impact has been um, overhated on as well. But yeah, he didn't look great last night. At least he tackled, which is better than a lot of the other pies mids can say. Side bottom well and truly looked washed. Um, poor decision making, panicky with the ball, fumbly. And really the fumbles could be said across all of the pies mids last night. Like not a great look. You can definitely have um, poor nights, no doubt. But yeah, they, they looked like the ball was slippery for them at times and um, uh, didn't for the Saints. Uh, I would say that their best mid by far was Pendlebury. And even he's showing his age where he's like at least 10, 15, 20% off his, you know, best prime Pendlebury. So 80% Pendles is their best mid, which is a concern. I, I would imagine Finn McCray needs to get a bit more of a run of it. I could imagine Mitchell getting dropped for someone like Bytel as well, or like at least McRae plays on ball and, and Bytel comes in next week. It was really bad. Uh, and then, so just to Dacos himself, he is not the guy that is going to be in and under and win the ball. He wants to stand out at the back of packs or be the person that receives it. And the Pies mids weren't getting their hands on it. Dacos himself wasn't putting his ball on the line and really got bullied by the bigger bodied mids in Steele and Windhager and even Ross, right? Those like those were the three that were standing on him for a lot of the game and he just got bullied by all of them. When he was in space, uh, 
I think St Kilda's like zone defense was pressing up, so they were cutting off a lot of the, you know, fifteen like forty five degree angle fifteen meter kicks that Dacos might run up to. So they were making that harder for him. And then the Saints really weren't sorry, the Pies really weren't looking for him for those kicks anyway. So he got almost none of those. You look at the um, marks there, they had 79 for the game, which is uh, what almost like four a player on average for, for what's on ground. And Dacos just got the one of those. Um, but yeah, a lot of those others like, you know, Josh Dacos, uh, Lip were, were able to get on the end of them. So yeah, not good. And then um, if you're following me on Twitter, I posted a couple of sc- screenshots where Dacos was hanging out the back and normally he'd be get the receive and, and be able to use it. And that didn't happen. And then the last thing that was really bad as well is City hated him. There were a lot of like 50, 50 things that could have been given him points, but he had like two tackles and a handball at least that were given to him and then taken back off later. So that also hurts. Uh, so yeah, bad game from Dacos combined with a bad game from Collingwood with a particularly bad game from their midfield. Uh, and then a good kind of press defense from Saints. All of that led to Dacos's worst supercoach score in a non-injured game since his second game of his career. So just incredibly bad luck. Uh, he wasn't tagged or anything like that by Windhager, but yeah, it was um, hard watching for someone that had him as vice captain everywhere. And, you know, no non-owners absolutely rejoicing on the back of this. Obviously, they were hoping for a tagged down game and to have a non-tagged absolute disastrous game is like well beyond what any of them would have even hoped. So absolutely rejoicing. Rest of this game, Marshall started hot, but then faded out. So I think those that have paid up, like haven't done too badly out of it, but obviously not um, not ideal. Uh, Nass looked amazing last night. They're absolutely like just getting it into his hands at all costs. Um, Sinclair, like clearly still coming back from that calf, but I thought played a really good game. And the net effect of him coming back in was that it hurt Bonner, despite Bonner still being the third half back. I think it was the first and third quarter he had like three fantasy combined in them. And then the second and fourth quarter, he was quite good. But it's just being that third half back, he's going to get less opportunity throughout the game, which uh, is going to hurt his consistency. Uh, you know, I I don't think he is what we saw in the first game where he's turning up. And I don't think we, he is what he is in this game, which is like a 50 or 60. I think the real Bonner is somewhere in between, but he's going to have, I think, um, some inconsistency just being that third half back. And then... Um, I think from a super coach perspective, Sinclair, uh, sorry, not Sinclair, um, Windhager is probably the most interesting one out of this. He's like 330k uh, defender mid option uh, for our side. So, you know, you're going to be looking at him, especially with the defense being scant. Like, can we do something with him going forward? I think there's a bit of interest there. He was uh, the second in CBAs behind only Steel and looked good. I've always been a bit of a Windhager fan and yeah, he just... Went to another level level last night, but I think it also helps that the pies look so bad. Like it was easy for the the Saints to look good, and then Steele, yeah, he started off really strong. I think his first and fourth quarters were good in this, but um, uh, like in the middle wasn't as consistent. My kind of feeling on Steele is, and I own Steele everywhere after not being convinced him in, during the preseason. The tackles numbers are, are great to see. Like that that's going to help him a lot. I think my take on Steele is he's definitely going to be better than what he's priced at. I think he can do 110 to 115, uh, probably more like 110 in super coach and probably about that in fantasy too. He'll be on the door of the top eight, but not like a game breaking pick. And I have a feeling he might be someone we actually end up upgrading to it, like upgrading from at some point later to an even more premium mid. But it could just be a function of like some of these opening games being a little bit weird. And when we get to some more stoppage heavy games, which this one definitely wasn't at times, then... Um, still ends up actually being like even better than than what this is. But I'm happy owning him. I'm just not like sold he's going to be like totally amazing pick. Wilson, very popular rookie in both formats. Glad I am on him. These are great scores, like 60s for the 124K forward type. So keeps pumping out those. He'll make some nice money for us. I'm sure the big question out of this game is like, are you going to trade Dacos? Uh, and as of right now, I think the answer is probably no, but we'll see what comes out of this game, what other problems I have, what other options pop up. I think the the biggest challenge for me is I don't really have any other defenders that I, I love as options to trade to. So I'm like, I don't love uh, Ryan. I don't love Stewart. I don't love Houston, but maybe a second week of data on some of these guys could convince me that it's worth jumping off Dacos, trading one of them and then getting Dacos back after his buy. Uh, even Windy could be an option, but I think that might be an upgrade from a, a read type rather than 
going down from Dacos. Uh, yeah, like this is my side here. For those wondering, I have done just the one trade so far this week, which is Gibkiss out, Billings in. Oh no, don't undo changes. No, 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 no. I wanted to hit the button that made that go away. Where's that? Okay, there you go. Um, so yeah, um, my as as I mentioned, my Dacos VC failed. So see on Tom Green here. I think definitely consideration for Bont and Butters, uh, especially now that Gold Coast is without um, uh, Wits. Uh, and yeah, it looks like uh, Butters has no Juan Francis in the side, which we'll talk about wines. I'm sure there'll be questions about that. And it looks like Hopper might be out. So lots of good opportunity for Butters there. But yeah, C currently on green. I'm looking probably to hold Fisher over downgrading him to a Dempsey or Berry type this week. And I'll give Martin one more week as well. But um, yeah, some moves to potentially make on those ones. Um, I can probably just straight field Grundy as well and take my E back here because I'm not going to be... Uh, needing the captain loophole, that's for sure. Although I don't really have anyone else to put an emergency on. I, mean, I could use Clark or Cadman. So, uh, yeah, I think the the struggle for me is like going down to a Barry or Dempsey type is like, I don't know. I've, like My rookies are kind of fine. I just need to get rid of Reed at some point and that's it. So I don't know if I have to do it. I think I want to give them a second chance. Save the boost this week as well, which is nice. Uh, hopefully get some value out of that later. All right. Um... So let's get some other questions. Is Luke Ryan the real deal, uh, Cam? Uh, I think that's really hard because that role looked absolutely insane, but we saw some pretty big injuries to Frio last week. And uh, I'm curious to see what it looks like this week. I mean, I think North, it's another good matchup. So I don't see why he wouldn't look pretty good against them. Uh, yeah, he could be the real deal. He was what, top six last year. So I don't see why not given that he doesn't really have any competition like Jordan Clark's the next best thing. And he's got some calf soreness. So yeah, could absolutely be fine. Who to bring in Jordan or Billings. I think Jordan is the better option of the two to bring in this week. Yeah. I'd probably go Jordan. The Swans run is just really nice. Field manner. If he gets a start, I don't know if I'd be fielding him. I guess it's the best way 18 week and you're looking for spike scores. So you could field him depends on who else your other options are there. Like, I'd probably field Manor over Reed. I don't like that GWS matchup, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, you could field, like, a Cadman type. Um, I'd probably field Manor over, like, a Berry or a, a Seth Campbell or something like that. So, yeah, it just depends on what your other options are there. So, the play was to fade Dacus from the start after all. It looks like it. It uh, looks like faders have got lucky. We'll just see what happens, because if Dacos bounces back with a 160 next week, then it's not so bad, but hey. You reckon Heaney's a must-have? I don't think Heaney's a must-have, but definitely a very good option. Like he's obviously got the early buy, which makes it hard for me to say must-have. If he didn't have that early buy, then yeah, maybe you could say must-have. He's going to make money, which is nice. But I guess the question here is whether or not you believe him to be a top six locked in for the rest of the year. If you think he's top six locked in for the rest of the year, you could probably say he has is like must-have. Um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know about must have for uh, old Heen Dog. I think he's just a very good option. You still got the Swans mids to come back, and then what will happen is you know TBC. But I think even as a healthy forward, he still probably can go nineties or low nineties as long as Swans are in good form. So yeah, very good option. I think he'll end up in more sides than not, but must have probably no. I wouldn't like force him in. Still, side bottom has to retire. That was horrendous. Yeah, I am on board with that. Thoughts on Bonner, if you didn't have Fife, would you be planning in making that trade next week? Thoughts on Bonner, if you didn't have Fife, would you be planning? I uh, Sorry, assume you're talking about going Bonner to Fife. I mean, like, wait and see we'll, how well Fife goes this week and what happens with the adjustments that they've made. So, um, like, Bonner should still make money, right? Like, even with a 60, I don't know. Let's see how close his projections are in this. Oh, he had a projected of 59 and then he got a 61. Uh, so like he got Essen in the week after who should be scored uh, easy to score on can get 30 K off that. So like, it just depends on what happens with Fife. I don't think you have to trade out Bonner next, like this week, but you could, if it's your biggest problem and like, yeah, Fife or someone like that looks really good and you don't have them. Thoughts on Hoare or Caulfield if uh, trading Gibkiss this week? I'd rather get Hoare than Caulfield, but I guess just watch out and make sure that Hoare's not the sub before doing that, uh, which you should be able to do because 
uh, Caulfield plays later. I want to see another week of Caulfield. Steal a chance to top eight mid. Yeah, I like. I think he's an outside chance, but I, I believe he probably won't be. But he'll be close enough that he becomes a very good pick at the price that you paid to start him. Um, and like, look, 119 and 120 in his first two games for Supercoach flying in, in, in fantasy equally is good. Crisp is surely on the chopping block soon, been average for the best of 12 months. Yeah, I mean, I think Crisp is being just so-so, but at least he's still trying to provide some of that run and carry. And like, yeah, his skills aren't great, but that's always been the case with Crisp. Sometimes it comes off, sometimes it doesn't. I think he's also a, another one suffering a bit like Nick, that the inside mids aren't doing very well. To go, he started horribly. Yes, he has been absolutely shocking, and I'm not sure that I could get him into my side, even if he bottoms out in price, especially as a mid only. If you got forward status this year, then that'd be con uh, like interesting to consider if it turns around. But yeah, to go, he's burnt me before. Would you rather own Clark and Sarong or Billings and Nico? Um, so if it didn't cost me a trade, like probably Clark and Sarong, um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a hard one. Uh, Yerg. Tempted a little bit. JD looked amazing in the mid. Oh yeah. That's a uh, Windhager response. Yeah, totally. Hold or trade Sicily. I'd be trading Sicily. I think I don't fancy his odds, but I guess it depends on who you'd be going to with him. Like if you didn't have Sheezle, I think that's a really easy trade. Uh, Port have a few sick, not sure who. Well, we know that um, Juan Francis is out, which is good with four wines. I guess how good is the question here and whether or not you hold on to him? I don't have him in super coach. I do have him in fantasy, but my fantasy team um, doesn't really have too many other flaws in it, to be honest. So I think I'm still trading out wines regardless, going wines to billings here. Um, yeah, I think you can hold though. If you've got other plays that you need to trade, it's fine. But I don't know if, I still don't know if I trade Fish. I mean, maybe I'd probably trade Fisher over Wines this week if I had both of them. What happened to Wits? Wits has been declared out. I'm not sure if... So, someone might be able to say exactly what the injury is, but yeah, he's a laid out. It might be illness. Do you reckon I should trade Bonner out next week? I mean, like, let's see what the options are next week. But maybe. I mean, especially if you don't have... Like, say Sharp goes 100 this week and you don't have Sharp, then yeah, probably. Trade Lazara and Gibkiss to Carol and Massimo or just use one trade Gibkiss to Whore? Uh, I just use one trade with Gibkiss to Whore. I would rather not go early on Carol and Massimo. I'd rather wait another week and see, dear Mac. Would you prioritize selling McKenzie or worth giving him an extra week? Uh, if it's fantasy, I think McKenzie straight out the door. If it's in super coach, I'd probably still send him out the door, but you could give him another week, you know, if yeah, yeah, up, up to you there. Um, also, would you feel Dempsey or Reed? I'd probably feel in a best 18 week. I'd probably still go Reed for the upside, but that's a hard one. Do you think Collingwood moved Dacos back to half black, back flank to get their run going again? Ah, uh, like potentially, but in, in that fourth quarter, they moved him forward rather than anything else, which was weird. So I don't, I don't know what they're going to do there. They need help though, for sure. I, I'm really curious as to what they do with their side this week and whether, um, uh, uh, fly like backs them in or if he actually makes some changes and swings the ax. Zero and three is pretty, pretty wild. Worried about Bonner getting benched next week. Could be a disaster pick. Is it worth using a boost to get uh, the Ambrosia this week? So it's interesting because while Bonner had a poor score, I don't think he necessarily played that badly. He had a few badish clanger kicks, but I think his defensive work was all right. Maybe I'm maybe Saints fans will correct me here, but I don't I don't see a reason why he'd necessarily be getting benched. Um, I don't see it like yeah, I don't I don't see that being the case. And then is it worth using a boost to get Ambrosio this week? I mean, what happens if um, Ambrosio scores a 50 or 60? I, I, like, I think that is totally possible that he goes quite low. Um, uh, and then, yeah, then I think you're going like, oh, what do I do with Ambrosio who scored a 60 and Bonner who scored a 60? 
I feel like that could potentially double down on your issues. If you're really cons- like confident in mass and you absolutely want him, then go for it. I am not confident enough to jump on him early this week. Uh, all right, D. Wilson score or Sharp score in the best 18 week? I would take the risk on Sharp over what Wilson scored. A 60s, whatever. Like, we'll get lots of 60s this week. Um, like, yeah, I, this, this score isn't good enough for me to take. I'd rather risk it on others. I've already got a 54 banked in here. I need better scores than this to take. Uh, what would you take for Reed if you had to do it this week? What would you take off, take for Reed if you had to do it this week? Ambrosio, pink. I have Hawes, Howes, Caulfield. Oh, if you, if I had to take Reed this week, um, for my team, I don't have Caulfield, so I go Caulfield. Uh, for others, yeah, I guess it's pink. We could have a look at the defenders. Um, I mean, if I could get up, if I had to go someone and I had the money for Massimo, I'd probably go Massimo. But at this point, I'm probably more like looking to um, win Hagen next week or something like that than than anything else. Defender. uh, I want selected to play. Which defenders we got? Oh, and the Bramble's potentially an option as well. So who we got here? I mean, yeah, it has to be... I think the order has to be Howes, Hoare, Caulfield, Pink as the four. Curious to see how Draper goes. I mean, Yuland could be okay, but this is a small defender. His job security should be all right now, so maybe like you consider Yuland over some of these others. But, it, yeah, it depends on your buys then as well. And then Dawson's probably too expensive. But, yeah, Reed, I'm waiting on to see, like, Caulfield and Pink. I'm not, not doing that trade this week, Spe- and especially with the other guys debuting. Uh, hypothetically, would you trade a Wines Martin to Heaney this week if you were a non-owner? Oh, would I go Wines to Heaney? I think, um, I probably would, probably would go Wines to Heaney this week or Martin to Heaney this week. That's a hard one though. Give kiss to Billings, leave it or trade Fisher to Jordan Berry as well. I mean, um, Sam, I like my trades this week are Gibkiss to Billings and I haven't done um, uh, Fisher to Berry, but I would be interested in going Fisher to Jordan, I think. Uh, and then whether or not you go Martin to Sarong this week, I guess it's up to you whether you want to wait another week and see on Martin or not. Heaney or Sarong, I bank 140k with Heaney. Uh... Probably Sarong, just because he doesn't have the buy. All right, will Cadman play? Yes, I don't see any reason why Cadman wouldn't play unless he's injured. Sarong into English or English into Butters VCC. I like the English VC this week, especially with no wit. So I'd probably be going there if you're paying up to start him. I think you want to have a go at him at Vice. Uh, ballsy move. I'm trading out Martin for Hogan. I mean, yeah, you got to hope Hogan keeps uh, scoring some big money with that one. Would you rather get Luke Ryan or Tom Stewart at this rate? Probably Ryan, which is weird because I would have said Stewart all preseason uh, up until last week. Should I trade Dawson out for Tom Green? No. Green's on by next week. I wouldn't be trading uh, anyone that's coming. Uh, like, I wouldn't trade anyone in that's on by next week. So, like, Flanders. Uh, Green, Miller, these types. Fantasy, Wines to Billings to get three rooks into midfield and down to one in the forward line or Grundy to Gorn. Uh, I've done the Wines to Billings move, Tom, so I guess that's what I'd say. I I think Grundy to Gorn is something I do next week if Grundy doesn't um, pan out again. Should I trade uh, Heaney to... Oh, and a rookie to... Or Massimo and Billings. What? Should I... Tr- Trade to Heaney and a rookie or maximum billings. Oh, I, I pro- mm, that's hard. Depends on who the rookie is. I got incomplete information here. Uh, especially if it's a must-have rookie, I'd probably go Heaney and the rookie. Uh, oh, Supercoach got a bit late. You've most likely said it already, but update on trades. Yeah, I mean, so for Supercoach, it's just give gifts to billings so far. And for fantasy, it is um, uh, Wines to billings and Clark to Dempsey. Uh, so yeah, kind of got all the rookies, I think, in that format. 
Uh, and then, yeah, I've, I've only got the Reed issue to deal with in Supercoach and we'll see whether that goes to like Windy, Bramble, Massimo, Caulfield next week. I think there's a few options there. Who are you trading for Gibkiss if you have Hall and How already? Uh, and you don't have DPP? I think you just wait a week. That's what I'm doing with uh, Reed. Would you bring in T Berry? And if so, uh, like, uh, yeah, I'd bring in Tom Berry and I'd just cash him in as soon as he, like, if he drops 250s and he makes 100K and the 100 falls off his rolling, then I'd get rid of him then. Uh, hey, Chris, how you going? Uh, take Steel VC. Yeah, yeah. You take the 120 if you, yeah. I think so. If you, if you, I think 120 is a good mark to take. With wits out, thoughts on Bont Captain option rather than green? Yeah, Bont's a fine option, but I'm not sure if wits being in the ruck is the biggest reason why Bont wouldn't do well as a captain. What if Coffield goes 85 and you can't bring him in because you went Massimo? Yeah, I, I think that's right. Like, there's a, 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 there's every world this week where Massimo gets outscored by multiple rookies that are then on the bubble. Uh, in which case you only get the 122 and one price rise, and then he just becomes a very average pick after that. Because he was playing wing, it wasn't like he was playing halfback. Are you planning to trade Reed to a Caulfield pink type? Not this week. I will hold and wait until next week to see if either of them are worth trading to. Uh, but it may be that Draper ends up playing really well and I actually want to trade to him in a couple of weeks. Which three are you fielding from Sharp, Roberts, McKercher, and Sanders? Uh, so... Uh... Oh, in fantasy, I've got um, uh, all of them, actually. So I haven't, I haven't had to make the decision. I think I would probably bench... Oh, that's so hard. So McKercher, I think, is an easy play. Roberts has the halfback role, and it's against Essendon, which I like as a matchup. Um, Sanders is playing Gold Coast, who have been pretty tricky. So I think I'd bench him, and yeah, Sharp, I like the matchup against North. So given that Sanders got subbed last week and Bevo's wild, uh, I'm probably benching Sanders of those options and going for the upside in the other ones. Is it? But like Sanders could well and truly outscore all, all three of them. It's, yeah, if I'm a rookie roulette, fun. Is it worth getting rid of Hayden Young for Heaney? Is it worth getting rid of Hayden Young for Heaney? No, I don't think so. Um, that seems like a bit of a waste of trade. All right, let's get some AFL teams going. Should be getting some uh, 5 p.m. rosters locked in here. And then we'll jump back into some more questions. We'll try and finish up before 5.30. Uh, thanks, Munby. Chris, I am see Butters. Now Bont could be better. Yeah, I mean, I think Butters, Butters Bont and Green are all reasonable options this week. Uh, Freddie Supercoach, my trade this week, could just give kiss to Billings. So that's it. That's all I've done so far. Uh, no. Do we have... We don't have final benches yet. Oh, we do. Okay. So, yeah. Harms, McNeil, and... Oh, McNeil out. There's a few that got him, I think, as a rookie option. Roses, yeah, and we heard about the Wits injury. Okay, so he's actually injured. Does anyone know what the Wits injury is? And then Sam Darcy is pretty interesting. He's cheap option in uh, all formats and one that should be looked at, especially if he's getting a uh, reasonable rock, rock time with lob out. I also think that that could hurt English because Darcy is a competent, very competent ruck from what we saw in the preseason. And Walter Ian is interesting as well. Potentially a downgrade option in a few weeks. Wits is a groin injury. Oof, he should be out for a little while then. We'll see though. Uh, all right, Burgoyne in. So that's another defender rookie option. Um, should play wing, we'll see. And then Dill Williams goes into the back line, I presume. Horn Fra How does that rebalance aside then with Horn Francis out? Maybe Port Fan could tell me. We got Bob Banks back in. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the debutante's name. I'm going to need to listen to that one a few times. Uh, Trezice in, Brown in. We got Young out, Gibkiss, Prestia, and then Broad and Hopper injured. Oh, man, this Tiger side is decimated. I can see why Butters C would be very appealing, even in Supercoach. There's no way this isn't a massacre, right? I can see why people would want to hold wines too. Mm -hmm. 
And then withered and out, we heard about that. Allen injured and gap out and got Barnett in. Marich is supposedly going to be the sub, so Barnett will actually get a game for anyone that has him on field anywhere. And then uh, it looks like, apart from Peatling for Haynes, no change for the Giants. Does that mean Peatling's probably their sub too? I mean, I don't think it's Cadman. All right, so pretty uneventful final teams here. We'll try and get to a few more questions um, and then I'll close up the stream. Uh, if I've missed anything here on these Sunday teams that you think is interesting, just please call it out. Always hard to go through it live. You never really like processing and thinking about it properly. All right. Uh, are you considering bringing in um, Wangan and Miller next week? Uh, not really. Like Sinclair still got to get back to his best and they still got three halfbacks back there and they've had um, two really soft matchups in terms of um, uh, cats and pies are pretty easy for halfbacks to score on when they're giving up that many marks. It's not going to be that way for the whole year. So I'm not sure how much I like want to jump in on those picks. At the same time, it's not like I love very many others. So for people that want to jump on Nass, I totally get it. He's, he's fun to watch, that's for sure, especially when he's up and about. Oh, I lost my part on um, where the questions were. Last thing, I have Gibkiss and Reed and facing a donut. If I don't bring in a defender, would you trade in Massimo early for Gibkiss or cop the donut or have an extra week to uh, excess? I mean, it's like, it's not actually a donut, right? Because it's best 18. So I think I'd, I'd probably just cop the donut. But if you have nothing else to do and you've got the money to go to Massimo, then you could take the pun on that. Just be aware that it, that it may backfire. <laughs> Wine's looking good uh, to hold with JF. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a better hold now with Juan Francis out. Just um, just keep in mind that Horn Francis actually played, despite the high CBA, he's played a lot of time forward. And like, I don't necessarily know that the extra CBAs go to Wines. Um, I think someone said that Hinkley and his press have said that he'll play the same amount of mid time, which I think means that like Mead and Drew will get more CBAs. Um, Drew only had something like 22%-ish CBAs and he averaged 50% last year and Mead could also do with more CBAs. So I'm not really sure if um, uh, if Horn, uh, sorry, if Horn, Wines actually sucks up that many, but we'll see. I mean, they, it makes sense that he would at least get some, but in the one game that Horn Francis missed last year, Wines also didn't get a boost from those either. So kind of interesting to see what happens there. Um, and yeah, like, so I guess the thing is on like trading wines out, I don't really have anyone else to trade out in fantasy. So I could get rid of Nick Martin, but he scored 93 and the role's great. It's better than wines, that's for sure. Got Fisher here who, I mean, has a goody, good little role, but yeah, this is obviously a bad score. It was against GWS though. So I'm kind of happy to see another week here before moving him on. Um, but yeah, like maybe there's an argument that Fisher goes, uh, like, sorry, that Fisher should go before Wines, and I could do that with the money, but I, I don't know. I'd rather field um, the four rookie defenders rather than play another forward on field. I kind of just like this structure more. I mean, I'm not getting in Bonner next week. It's kind of weird what I'm going to do with um, M5. I've got to get in some midfielders quickly at some point, but yeah. So yeah, I, like it, it does, It don't get, don't get me wrong, it does make Wines a better hold. I just don't think in my situation I have better trade-out targets, even with the better information. Is Martin to Holmes early a good idea? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, if you're scared that you have um, three problems to correct next week, then sure. But Holmes could well and truly be one of those problems as well. So um, it, it's still a risk. Like you could, but it's still a risk. It's still a must have trade in next week. I don't think he'll be must have trade in, but like once again, good option. So if, um, Martin fails uh, again next week, then like going to someone like steel makes a lot of sense. Thoughts on picking Matt Owies. I don't know. Is this some type of meme or joke? Why would it, why would anyone be picking Matt Owies? No, no. Okay. No, there's no reason. I don't get I don't get that James, but sure. Captain Butters, Bont, or Shees this week. I would be going yeah, Butters or Bont. Thoughts on English C? Yeah, English C. I think good option with no wits. Um, didn't realize you hit four K subs. Uh yeah, thanks. I think I think I did that like a, a week or two ago, which is nice, nice little milestone. So thanks you all for subscribing. Appreciate it. Um, oh, I lost my spot again. I must say, like uh, the YouTube. 
studio that they have is much worse than StreamYards. I really should probably use that more. Oh no. Super lost my spot now. I wish there was some way to like tick off the comments as well. Hey Jack, sorry for fantasy question, but I was wondering if you'd VC Gorn or Bont into Kelly C. I assume that's Josh Kelly, which is a bold little call there. Uh, I'd probably go VC Bont over Gorn still. Fisher Fantasia and Nick Martin out for Tom Berry, Billings and Hogan. You could definitely do that, uh, Jacob. Yeah, uh, Williams plus Fisher to Heaney plus all. I think that's fine. Uh, but I, like, I don't know necessarily in a way I'd be trading Williams. I guess it's just so you can get the Heaney trade done. That could come back to bite you though. Uh, Martin to Sarong or wait until next week. I, I mean, like I'm personally, I'm waiting, but I can see why people would go on it now. Are you completely off Fisher or are you holding a week? I'm probably holding Chris. Like I think it's more likely than not that he fails, but I'd rather hold and wait one more, one more week and see. Uh, trade Juan Francis. I mean, I'd probably trade uh, like a grade one hammy is which is what it sounds like. It's probably still two weeks minimum, maybe three. So I think you can probably get off him and get on to someone else. Uh, and I think the other problem with Juan Francis is like, he may not play enough games now to get DPP by round six, which would have been, would have been the real benefit if he got forward status. Un unlucky though, that it looked like it was going to be a real good pod. This week and next week, trades out Fisher, Martin, Wines, and Young in Sheasel, Billing, Sarong, Massimo. What do you think? It's a lot of trades. Fisher, Martin, and Wines, and Young. I mean, I like, I don't know the ordering of these things. So getting Sheasel in, I feel like, is good and probably no regrets. I feel like getting Billings in is good. I feel like you could wait a week, though, on Sarong and Massimo. For those that have to go this week, then by all means. But yeah, I'd just, I'd rather not if I didn't have to. Would you rather do Newcomb to Heaney, Wines to Holmes, or Newcomb to Butters and Wines to Billings? I would rather go Newcomb to Butters and Wines to Billings. Uh, Holmes is the one I like the least of those four. Wines more CBAs made with Jay. Yeah, he, it might get more um, CBAs with Horn Francis out, sure. But I'm not sure it's uh, right. What's the website where you can see live rank? Yeah, the Supercoach data guy is unfortunately gone. So we are back in the wilderness now on where we are for live ranks for Supercoach. It's like one of my favorite fantasy uh, features in fantasy as well. Start Cadman or Sexton for Supercoach? I'd still start Sexton. The role's better. I think he can go just as big as Cadman, if not bigger. Trade and Moyle. Uh, I mean, in fantasy, you probably could. In Supercoach, you're waiting. Uh, it just depends on how long that Wits groin injury is going to be. If if it was like six weeks and getting Moyle would make sense. But I, once again, you can probably wait a week on that and see how he goes first game up. Especially if you've got um, Barnett who's playing this week. Would you trade Eamon instead of Wines this week? Yeah, I think you could. Depends on which format, but I think you could. Uh, especially if you were a big Wines fan. Uh, what do you think Tiger, yeah, Tiger's decimated defense means for short? It's a good question because they've lost more, right? He's playing account accountable here. Sam Banks will come and play defense as well, won't he? I don't know. Like the only small defender they've lost is um, Broad, right? And if um, Banks comes in and Trezais comes in, Short's probably still okay. I don't, I don't know if it affects him that badly. Because uh, he was getting pushed up out, uh, out of defense into the wing anyway, right? So you probably want less defenders. So Vlossen has to be accountable and Short can be freed up. I, I don't know if it's a bad thing for him. I might, might be a well off base there, but I just surface level. I don't see how it's a bad thing. Which two rookies to field out of Cadman, Dempsey, t and Sexton? I'd probably go Sexton and Cadman. Hit the matchup for plus side on uh, upside on Cadman. Worth going young to Ryan this week. Young to Ryan. No, I don't think so. What are your thoughts on boosting to get Martin, Fisher, and Gibkiss to Saron, Caulfield, and Berry? I mean, like, these are that's pretty risky and aggressive there, Freddie, especially. Like, Sarong and Caulfield, you can wait another week on. Martin and Fisher, you can wait another week on. So I don't know why, like, why you'd boost to get all that done this week. Oh, comments just gone again. Do, 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 do. 
All right, Fisher and Martin worth trading to Billings and Heaney. 140k in the bank or Sarong or hold. Uh, so Fisher and Martin is probably worth it to go to Billings and Heaney with 140k in the bank, but I also think you could hold. I wouldn't go to Sarong over the other options. Would you trade Hayden Young to Sheasel? Uh, I don't know. I, th I, I From everything I've heard speaking to Frio and listening to Frio people, like Hayden Young should still stay in the midfield. I do want Sheasel a lot, but I don't know if I'd necessarily give up Hayden Young to get there. Fisher and Reed for Jordan and Berry. Worth two trades, already doing Gibkiss to Ambrosio. Yeah, I think Fisher and Reed to Jordan and Berry is worth two trades. Yep, yeah, Parish out for Sydney. That's right. Which, I mean, Perkins will probably have mid-time for another week. It makes it very difficult to assess whether he'll be a good option or not because we won't have seen any games with Parish on the side to actually know where he will sit in the pecking order. But as Sarong or Merritt, pick only one. Uh, I would still go Butters. Hamstring strain should be 21 days for Juan Francis. Yeah, it yeah, could totally be three weeks, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, I think two would be the most optimistic. I think four is even on the table, depending on how quickly he comes back from it. Field Manor, if not sub, or Cadman versus West Coast Eagles. I mean, I think you could field um, Manor if he's not a sub. He's been very productive as a mature age um, in the two. So, yeah, I'd probably go Manor. Roberts or Reed on field. Roberts is Fife a must-have. I don't think Fife is a must-have. I mean, in Supercoach, you get another week to look at him anyway. What's more kissed, English last two years, Wits 2022 or Kate Hoare in 2023? Kate Hoare for sure. Oh, it's always Kate Hoare. Uh, go early on Hoare. Nah, only if you have to. I don't think you should necessarily. Trade Clark to Barry or Hold. Um, if it's in one trade, I'd probably go Clark to Barry. Uh, but if you had to use your boost or you have to do another trade to make get the cash to happen, then I think I'll wait, which is what I ultimately decided on this week. Hey, Jay, you really want to keep um, the fish and mutton, but kind of need the cash for Billings and maybe Massimo next week. Should I just hold? I think going Fisher to Billings this week is fine. I don't think Fisher's going to be a keeper. Martin Tahini, worth it. Uh, not sure on that one. It could be, but I like I. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'd rather hold Martin, see how he goes, and then get Flanders off his buy than going Martin to Heaney and copping the buy. Uh, Captain Bont or English? Probably English with no wits. I think that makes sense. If you've paid up for English, you've got to be comfortable throwing the Captain Monument into uh, plus matchups. Would you consider Bont to steal next week if you feel that you've spent too much money on primo midfielders? Uh, for super coach, that's an interesting one um, to free up money. It depends on what Bont scores this week. Like if he drops a 90 or something, then yeah, I think that's on the cards because he could easily lose 150K or something like that over the first month. And then yeah, it will have absolutely been worth it. What are your trades you thinking for super coach? Sorry if you've already said that's all right, Benny Wop. Uh, I, like, I know people are interested and I haven't posted them anywhere, but it's... Um, still like the same stuff I posted on Twitter during the week that I was tossing up. Um, at the moment, I think I'm just going to do um, uh, give kiss to Billings and that be it. I don't think I'm going to boost and do anything else. I'll give Clark another chance, give Fisher and Martin another chance. And it could backfire because if I end up with those three all being issues and Grundy, then I'll have more issues than trades, but I'm hoping that at least some of them pan out. And I would trade Reed this week to a Caulfield or a Pink if they had a really good score week one and I was super confident in them, but I just, I don't see that at the moment. So once again, wait on that as well. We've got other options coming in with uh, Draper and stuff debuting too. Is it season over if you fade Sarong and Steel in the coming weeks? They look like the most locked in Primo so far. Uh, I mean, we've seen one game from Sarong and we've seen two from Steele. I don't, like, I still think Steele is probably not top eight and Sarong probably is top eight, but we'll just see how he goes this game. Is Liza trade? And if so, to either Dempsey or Berry. Uh, I mean, he still got named and he played pretty average. GWS is one going to be one of the tougher sides for sure. I don't think he's necessarily a trade. But if you were going to trade him this week, then I can see why you'd go to Barry for the quick cash with that 100 in his uh, rolling average. 
Barnett is going to get a game this week for the Eagles. He is excited to see how he goes. Hopefully he can get some money for us in fantasy. Field, Dempsey, Reed, or take Wilson's e-score. I'd probably go Dempsey or Reed to beat the 59 or whatever it was. It's not that good of a score. I think, you know, it's probably still going to drop out of your top 18 anyway, so I'd rather have a go at beating that. Should I start Dempsey, Cadman, uh, or McKenzie over Reed? I would still... I mean, you've paid up for McKenzie, so I'd roll him out. Also, I think uh, Adams, even Parker back for the West Coast game. If we see Heaney puts uh, just playing forward, that game is your trade out at his buy. Uh, it's, so it, you still have to have other options to trade Heaney to for that to make sense. Because I think as a forward, he's proven in Supercoach, he can go 90, which may be top six forward still this year. But if it looks like, I don't know, maybe McRae's come back and he's had two really good games or something and you might offload him to at that point. We'll just, we'll just have to play it by ear. Jed, if I don't have Heaney or Billings, have nowhere to get Gibkiss to Billings. So here's what I'm thinking. Fisher to Heaney, Gibkiss to Hoare, Martin to Heaney, moving Flanders into mids. I mean, like you could do that, could backfire, but it seems on the surface, okay. But you've also said um, Fisher to Heaney and Martin to Heaney. So I feel like I'm not getting a good idea for what that actually, oh, uh, Fisher to Billings. So Fisher to Billings, Gibkiss to Hoare, Martin to Heaney. Moving one into the mid. It just depends on how much you see Heaney as a must-have this week because effectively you're boosting Martin to Heaney. Do you really need to do that? Because you could just go fish to Billings and give this to Horse. So that's like, how badly do you want Heaney? How badly do you want to get off Martin? If the answer is yes, like really badly on both of those, then boost it out. Jack Clark, upside without Tanner. Yeah, totally um, Tanner. Uh, like uh, Clark has upside without Tanner Bruin. Is it worth fielding over Roberts or Sanders? I still probably rather field Roberts or Sanders over him. I wonder in fantasy, I actually don't, uh, like I, I trade, I'm trading this week, right? Oh, should I be trading him this week? Maybe I shouldn't be trading in this format. I don't know what else I'd do though. I really don't have much else to do. I don't want to be putting Fisher up to anyone. It's a good thought. I mean, I really don't want to get rid of, um, Clark necessarily, but I, I think I'm happy to trade him anyway and just. If he has a good game, I'll get him back in for someone else that will have made more money. Mm, but yeah, like Clark, I I still would field Roberts or Sanders over Clark. Fisher to Billings and Laz to Berry. Depends on what format. And Supercoach is probably fine. Yep. Sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. Would you field Windsor or Sanders? I'd field Sanders. Berry or Cadman? Uh Probably Barry. He's got 100 in that average. Take the quick cash. Did you play around with Fisher and Martin out of your team? I like. I did for a little bit, but uh, I end up with a lot of cash. Like I'd go Fisher down to. Um, I mean, we can have a quick look now. But like, this ends up going like, say, I go like Fisher down to um, Barry or Dempsey or something like that, right? Um, I end up with like a ton of cash, and then that means Martin's going to some type of premium like Sarong, which I could you know, totally do, um, like 90k next week, like I could, could do something like that, but I just don't know if it's worth the two extra trades and the boost to make that happen. Um, I think I'd rather just wait and see next week than do it now and go early on this, which is funny. It's not as aggressive as I thought I'd be playing, but I think it's cause it's the mid prices. Are you looking at lines next week? He's averaging around 94. Um, most fading because Neil put both, uh, but both played around zero. So I wasn't fading him because of Neil. I was fading him just because I didn't know if he'll still be on that side post buy. Just because they had, I mean, last year they didn't play him in more than two consecutive games lines. He's used to sub a lot as well, which just completely kills him. So if he's named round three and I don't know, I'm getting rid of Martin and I don't want to go up to another mid, then yeah, I could see myself getting lines. I've definitely got, I, like the scoring powers out, I just need to be certain that he's going to play in week in, week out. And that wasn't obvious at the start of the year, especially with like DevRob and stuff coming back as well. Hewitt, Martin, Malley for Sarong, Heaney, Berry. Hewitt, Martin, Malley, Sarong, Heaney, Berry. Yep, I think those trades make sense. You can do that. Field Sharp or Roberts for fantasy? Uh, probably Roberts still. Like it could be very well, could very well be sharp. Sarong into green or English. Uh, yeah, like 
that's great. Uh, probably Sarong into English, but it could be green. Both of those are good options. Is it fine to cop a donut in defense? Yeah, it is. I think it is. Um, Horton Francis to Hogan. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I want Henny Badly. Then go get him. Is Billings point scoring sustainable? And what do you think he will average? Should I pick Billings over Holmes in fantasy? Uh, so, I mean, he's not scoring 140 every week, but I would have had him pegged to be able to do like 80s, um, you know, like maybe five above his average here. Uh, I, I think the tricky part is like after this week, the matchups aren't amazing. So we'll just see how we go. But the 140 means that he should still be able to make some nice money for us regardless. Pick your choice, Wines or Martin Sarong or Ryan. Uh, so I'd rather have Martin than Wines still because I think there's a chance he's a defender keeper. There's no chance Wines to keeper. And Sarong or Ryan, I'd rather have Sarong than Ryan. Do you think Ryan has a new and better role this year? No, Ryan's role is the same as last year. He's just got less competition with um, Hayden Young out. I feel like we might have to go early with uh, on Jordan or Grundy trade just to have the security with their buy. Yep, I think that's probably true. I mean, I, I thought there was always a chance that one of these, like Jordan Grundy there, cash makers, Roberts is the same. They're not meant to be premiums. So there's a good chance that one of them goes before their buy. For example, Grundy has another poor week in, in Supercoach and Cherry goes, well, I'm probably trading him out. Uh, in fantasy, same thing. I've already got Cherry, but if Grundy goes poorly again, I've got, what, 130K in the bank. I might be looking to move him on for a, um, a Gorn type or even go up uh, to a, a bigger dog than that. Or Ambrosio for Gibkiss. Want to use all the trades this week, as I will know, don't need all three next week. So I would go Hor over Ambrosio then. Do you think it's possible? And gives you gives you cash more flexibility next week. Do you think it's possible Mitch Owens ends up a top six forward? Oh, let's have a look at what he's averaging. I'm sure he. I think he nearly tunned last night with no goals or something, right? Oh, they don't. Um, yeah, hundred and eight. 600 uh, and what did he average last year? Uh, to be honest, I haven't looked into it too much. 80. Uh, look, it's possible. It's an outside chance. So what's his price at 445? I'd rather wait and see him do it. I wouldn't be um, paying for 445 for, for it. But yes, it's possible he's a top six forward. Yo or Caulfield for Massimo? What Yo or Caulfield for Massimo? I wouldn't be trading either of those to Massimo. JD, I'm trying not to pick Hogan, but the 100k cash gen is tempting. I mean, I think like the thing is, even though Hogan could make 100k cash, you're still going to have um, 400k of player, an additional 400k of player on buy. And if you've got Cadman, Sexton, Barry, these types, then like yeah, your forward line's looking pretty thin at that type, especially you've got Flanders as well. I think if you're looking to make um, quick money, it's safer and easier to do it off a Barry than it is to do off a Hogan. And then have your primo on someone that's not going to be on the buy. Hey, JD, Young to Sheasel worth a correctional trade or hold? I'd still hold off on Young to Sheasel. I think getting Sheasel will be right, but I'm not sure if it's going to be off Young yet for those that don't um, have Sheasel. What, especially if you've got Dacos as well. Dacos is going to lose more money than Young is. What's your view on Hogan? Can he be a keeper? No, I don't think Hogan will be a keeper. Fantasy, McKenzie and Amon for Yoan Billings. Yep, I tick that off. Surprised we had no carnage in the team um, announcements. It's kind of disappointing. Adds a, uh, a bit of adversity. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see what happens next week. Maybe it's just in bad scores we get again this week. It's kind of what happened last week as well. The um, the carnage wasn't too bad outside of like Reed and Gibkiss, but then you had lots of popular picks kind of underperforming, and that's where the the decision making comes in. The carnage is in how you react to those poor scores. What were my fantasy trades? My fantasy trades were and still are. Wines to Billings and Clark to Dempsey. Uh, I don't really have any glaring holes in my side at the moment, apart from you know potentially Dacos and Grundy. Uh, Martin could be an issue. Fisher could be an issue. But yeah, the rest of it's kind of tracking along nicely at the moment. I've kind of got all the rookies here. So um, I've just done these trades because I think it frees up the most money for me um, or like will create the most value. But I mean, I could very easily be needing Jai Clark back next week if he looks very good without Bron tonight. A few more minutes of questions and then it will be calling it. Our power will be over. So we've seen one games from Billings. How are you so confident? I'm not so confident in Billings. Um, I think there's every chance that he's poor again this week and then Goodwin stuff's around with him. I mean, we saw him debut as a sub. But what was that? But we've seen Billings be able to do 90s in the past at the Saints. Uh, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to necessarily do it at the D's as long as he got a run at the right role. 
Uh, so where he's priced at, I think he's very much a good risk to take on, but it it may not work out. That's like totally reasonable. But he was someone that was on all preseason, and the only reason I jumped off was because of that sub. If he'd put a 70 up in round zero um, as a non-sub, I would have started him and then kept him. So, yeah. Uh, Fisher to, to Billings without using a boost. Yep, I think I'd be happy to do that. Uh, for AFL Fancy, Newcomb to Billings or Grundy to Cherry? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think I would rather go Newcomb to Billings, but I guess it depends on how confident you are in Newcomb. I think there's every chance Grundy bounces back this week and his break even isn't too bad, but yeah, uh, that's a toughie. That is a real toughie. Maybe. Um... Yeah, I guess I've been a new cater, so I probably would say jump off him. I've uh, I've buried a boost to go Martin, Gibkiss and Fisher into um, Mass, Fife and Heaney. I feel like that's reactionary on the fence though. Uh, I mean, it is, but... Uh, it is a little bit because outside of Heaney, you can kind of wait on the other trades to see how they work out. So I, I think it could pay off, right? Like I think the your ins are probably better than your outs, but you're right, it could um, blow up in your face this week. So I guess it just depends on how risk averse or risky you want to be with those trades and then how much stuff you think you might still need to do next week because if you still have rookie corrections to go, uh, you might just need to take the risk. Thoughts on Grundy to Cherry and Wines to Sharp keeps 400k for next week. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's fine. I assume that's fantasy probably. And yeah, that's okay. Fish to Billings, one trade and hold Gibkiss uh, one more week or Gibkiss to Caulfield and Laz or Fisher to Billings. Um, so if Gibkiss is, if you don't have uh, Reed, then I think you can hold Gibkiss one more week to see what happens with Caulfield and then just do the Fisher to Billings trade. Fantasy captain Heaney gone, she's all butters. I would be captaining of those butters. I think that's who my captain is on. Uh, but I, I don't have gone, I guess. But yeah, I'd be going captain butters. Lies to bury this week or hold off until next week and go Dempsey if he performs. Uh, so yeah, I've been weighing this up. So I mean, I think I'd wait on that. <sighs> like Barry makes sense to go now just because he's got the 100 in his um, second game. And if Dempsey has a poor game, you're not going to want to go him. But I think you'd rather wait, wait a second week on Laz anyway, just to see if he can actually put up a good score and save you the trade altogether. Is Windhager just a fantasy option or super coach option as well? No, I think he's a super coach option as well. Um, even though his price point's a little bit awkward at 300k, he looks good. Second to mid, uh, 300k. I, I think that that makes sense as someone that we would look at very seriously next week, especially over Massimo, who's playing wing. Would I rather have Saints second CBA mid or Hawks wing? I think I want the the midfield CBA guy. Uh, would you hold Fisher or trade to Billings or hold Fisher and let Billings go? I would uh, trade Fisher to Billings. VC Butters into Green. Yep, that's fine. I think that's those are good choices. If I had Green, I'd probably have him as captain over Butters. Um, I mean, I've got Green captain here over Butters. So, yeah, I think that's good VCC. Uh, if I'd known that um, uh, the Tigers were going to be without Hopper and uh, Port was going to be without Horn Francis, I probably would have gone VC Butters over Dacos. But, hey, it is what it is. Is there hope for Bonner? Uh, I mean, I, I think he's like probably an 80s, 70s to 80s average guy, Bonner. Um, so he should be better than what he scored, but it, are you going to have like up and down games, I think. Fisher and Gibkiss to Billings and Mass. Uh, so yeah, Fisher to Billings, yes. I don't know if you, like it depends on whether you feel like you have to go Gibkiss to Massimo this week. Would you rather have Windy next week? What happens if Mass scores 60? you got to answer those questions. Billings or Fife? Uh, I'd, just, I'd go Billings because Billings um, is on the bubble or getting that price rise. Uh, Fife, you can wait on. Any Smokies on uh, who you can think would be top six forward? I haven't had a look at it enough, um, to be honest. Fantasy trade. I mean, like a lot of them will end up being some of these like mid-pricer guys like Fife, Billings, Jordan, and Fisher are all like smoky top sixes. But everyone's got them, so it's not really smoky. Fantasy trade Buderick or hold and see. No, I'd trade him. Well, you, you've got him in to make money in the 25 as ensuring that he doesn't make money for a while. 
predict roughly where Sarong will what score this week and what his average for the year will be. Uh, so average for the year, I think like 115 for him and he will score like 130 this week if I have to place nice round numbers on that without looking at any data. Is Martin just wrong with the points risk? It could be. Could you trade in mana over Dempsey if in fantasy if mana is 20 in the 22? Uh, potentially. Potentially you could. I mean, it's definitely worth considering, but Mana's job security is still a little bit iffy, right? Um, Dempsey's probably a little bit safer, and Dempsey's got a um, a bigger score in his system where doesn't Mana have like a weird sub score in his? So like he's got a twenty three, right? And Dempsey's got a, a what is it, a ninety two? So I mean, I think I'd still rather have Dempsey this week, and then like course correct if you need to. AF again, sorry, um, Amon or Wines to Billings. I mean, I've gone Wines to Billings. I don't have Amon. It uh, just depends on how much you think the Horn Francis out news helps Wines. Would you hold Bonner? Depends. Like, let's see what happens over the rest of the week. But, uh, like, given where my team's right, I'd probably be trading. I think more likely to trade than hold. Uh, what do you trade this week? All right, so last time, and I think we might call it there. So in fantasy, I've gone Wines out, Billings in, and Clark out for Dempsey in. Team looks like this. Vice Captain Fail, Dacos, Captain on Butters. I've got Roberts, Kircher, Sharp, Sanders on field over any of these forward options. And then just Sexton on the on the forward line over like Cadman, Reed, Dempsey type. In Supercoach, I've done just one trade. It is Gibkiss out for Billings in through Yo DPP. Um, I don't have wines or anything like that to make that decision. And I've decided to hold off on Reed and see what happens with Mass. Um, uh, Coffield, Draper, Pink before I make a decision on whether I go to him or any of those other options, including Winhagen next week. I've gone Kircher, Sanders and Roberts on the bench. I don't have a sharp type though. Um, and I'm not taking um, uh, Wilson's 59. I'm not looping that on. I'd rather take a risk on um, some of these other guys getting some better scores than that. In the forward line, once again, just the one rookie on field and it's Sexton over like a Reed or anything else like that. Um, I'm ultimately passing on Barry because the only rookie that I have that I could really get rid of is like a Clark type. And I think I'm happy to wait and see how Clark goes this week before making a call on whether he goes to Mana, Dempsey, Sharp, uh, a few good options there to play out. Uh, and then I don't have RDT, so there's no RDT trades to show. Uh, and Bolter, I don't have that up, but I think I've gone um, Billings in, Mass in, Wines out. Buderick out and then uh, sharp in for Clark, I want to say. Uh, start Lazo Cadman on field. I'd send Cadman, see how it goes. What's your opinion on Archie Perkins? Uh, I mean, I, I think he should be all right if he gets lead mid time for Bombers, but it's not going to be like that every week, especially once Parrish returns. Thoughts on Whitfield after buy for Supercoach? I like it as an option in fantasy. I've already got him, so yeah. Hard to disagree with that. All right. Well, thanks everyone for turning up as always. Hour of power, all done. Good luck with your teams, your trades, your captains, your vice captains and all that stuff. And I'll see you for the debrief and uh, we'll lick our wounds, pick ourselves up and go again next week. Peace and have a great weekend.